Hi, this is Ron Clymer again. Now, let's talk about closing statements. Y'all come with me in your book to page 311. On page 311, there's a picture of a closing statement there on page 311. Now, if you look up at the top of the page, this is called a composite closing statement. It's called a composite closing statement because it has the buyer on one side, the seller on the other, and the information running down the middle of the page. Now, actually, if you look at page 310, if you look at page 310, you will see the buyer's closing statement, which is one side of page 311. We'll back up to page 309, and there's the seller's closing statement, which is the other side of page 311. So the truth is, you could have these on separate sheets of paper, but this is called a composite closing statement. It has them all on one sheet. Now, y'all remember this morning we talked about RESPA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. RESPA requires that we not use this closing statement, but that we use a HUD Form 1. And any new loan has to use HUD Form 1. We use this form in the book. This example in the book is not a new loan. It's an old loan that's being assumed with the purchase money being held by the seller, and so it doesn't use HUD Form 1. In real life, you'll probably never see a closing statement that looks like this, but that's what they look like on the exam. Now, you notice on page 311, you got the information going down the middle of the page. You got the seller on the left and the buyer on the right. Now, you've got two columns debits and you've got credits. Now, if y'all don't know what debits and credits are, let me tell you this. When you go to a closing as a buyer or a seller, there's one or two things going to happen. You're going to have money coming at you, which makes me smile. That's called a credit. You might want to draw that picture at the top of those two columns on page 311. <laughs> Or you're going to have money going away from you, which makes me frank. That's called a debit. And you might want to draw that picture right there next to the debits. So the debits are the frowny faces, and the credits are the smiley faces. Are you all with me on that? Now, let's just take a look. What's the first item? The total purchase price. Well, who's smiling about that? The seller, is that right? That's a big old credit for the seller and a big old debit for the buyer. Y'all with me? Yep. Now look at the next item. Earnest money deposit. By the way, where is that money right now? It's in the broker's escrow account, is that right? So it's in the broker's escrow account and that money's going to flow onto the buyer side of the ledger as a credit to the buyer. Smiley face credit to the buyer. Seller has no concern with that money. It doesn't even show on his side of the ledger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, in this example, we have that $59,000 mortgage that's being assumed by the buyer. It's being assumed by the buyer. That means the seller He's selling his house, but the seller owes that debt, that $59,000 debt. The buyer is going to take over that debt. Well, closing statements are about cash today. There's $59,000 cash that the seller ain't getting. Frowny face debit to the seller. And there's $59,000 that the buyer doesn't have to come up with today. Credit to the buyer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, because we jumped a little bit ahead, we haven't talked about owner-held mortgages. But you see you got that little $3,600 mortgage there that the seller is holding. The seller's holding that mortgage. That means the buyer is going to owe him that money and pay it to him over some period of 10 years or something. Well, here's the deal. Looking at this from a cash today, sellers all smiles about that total price, right? But here's 3600 bucks he ain't getting today. Frowny face debit to the seller. Now the buyer, he's all frowns about that total price, 
But here's 3,600 bucks he doesn't have to come up with today. Credit to the buyer. Does that make sense? Now, you notice there on page 311, there's two horizontal lines running across the page indicating that we've got like a little section on the closing statement. And the heading there is prorations and prepayments. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what prorations are. Does everybody know that when you own property, whether you own a vacant lot or a 30-story building, if you own property, it causes cash flow in your life. It causes money to flow towards you in the form of rent. It causes cash to flow away from you in the form of interest, in the form of taxes, in the form of insurance payments. So anytime you own a property, you got money flowing in, money flowing out. Well, some of that money flows in by the year, by the month, and maybe even different things than that. But for our purposes in this class, we got three things we're going to prorate. And uh, one of them is taxes. Now here's the deal. Let's say we had a closing today on March the 30th. Now, does everybody know that we pay taxes in Florida in arrears? We pay taxes in arrears. Your 2011 tax bill has not come in yet. It's not going to come in until November. So let's say that today Mr. Seller sold his house to Mr. Buck. Okay? And let's just say, well, let's keep this real simple. Let's say their taxes are $3,650 per year. That's the taxes. $3,650 per year. All right? Now, Mr. Seller can't pay his portion of the taxes if he wanted to. What's going to happen in November, Mr. Byer is going to receive a tax bill for $3,650, which Mr. Byer is going to have to pay in November. But Mr. Seller has owned the house for three months in the, in the beginning of the year. So what's fair is we figure out how much Mr. Seller owes and he turn it over to Mr. Buyer at this time because he's going to be forgot the buyer's name by November. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, first thing let's do, let's figure out how much the taxes are per day. All right? $3,650. How many days in a year? Y'all want a few minutes to think that one over? $365, you said? Okay. So, 365 days in a year. So, how much of the taxes per day? Ten dollars per day. Is that right? Now the next thing we got to do is figure out how many days the sellers own it. Alright? Uh, 31 days in January. Is that right? Yes. How many days in February? 28. How many in March? 31. Well, hold on a second. If we were having a closing today on March the 30th, we're having a closing on March the 30th. As a matter of negotiation between the buyer and the seller, we would have already decided who owns the day of closing. Now, when I say owns the day of closing, that means one party is going to reap any benefit that comes from owning the property that day or suffer any consequence. Now, in real life, this is in the fine print in the, in the FAR bar contract. For our purposes in this class and on the exam, it'll tell you right in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the question who owns the day of closing, who's charged with the day of closing, who's responsible for the day of closing. So let's just say, for instance, it's the buyer. No particular reason, and it's only because I said so. So the buyer owns the day of closing. That means he owns the 30th. So how many days is the seller responsible for in March? 29. 29. Everybody see that? All right, so let's add these up. Um, six, seven, eight, is that right? Yes. So the seller owns the property for 88 days. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? $10 times 88 days. What's the calculator say? $880. $880. Now, that's $880 that the seller owes to the buyer. Is that right? Who's going to be frowning about that? 
Seller. Frowny face debit to the seller. Smiley face credit to the buyer. Everybody with me? Now, you got to get that last part right or you wasted your time doing the arithmetic. By the way, does everybody know the days of the month? Do y'all know the little poem? 30 days have September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February full of fun. No. Y'all didn't learn that poem in the third grade? No. You did, Amy? Yeah. yeah, I did too. Now, if you... Hold on there. All right, hold on. I don't know. All right. Let me teach y'all the knuckle method if you don't know. Yeah, knuckles is what I do. If you don't know the knuckle method, here's the knuckle method. You take your fist, you put them together like this. All right? You start with January, that's a knuckle. February is a valley. March is a knuckle. April is a valley. May is a knuckle. June is a valley. July and August, back to back, 31 day months. Uh, September, valley. October, knuckle. Uh, uh, November's a valley, December's a knuckle. So if you don't know the poem, and by the way, you can't learn the poem as an adult. Yeah, you have to know if you knew it as a child, it's like the ABC song. You can't learn it as an adult. So, uh, But use a knuckle method, and uh, that'll work like a charm. But you got to know this. You can't bring a calendar. No, you can't bring a calendar. But well, Ron, I got a calendar on my phone. You can't bring a phone to the exam. Did I tell you all that? Yeah. Okay. No phones in the exam. Okay. So, uh, um, all right. Everybody with me here. Everybody with me here. So this is going to be an $880 debit to the seller, credit to the buyer. Now, we pay taxes by the year. So we prorate them by the year. Make sense? We pay them by the year. We prorate them by the year. 11 minutes. Okay. Uh, well, actually, before you turn that off, mm -hmm. I need to tell people that I have my review class on audio CD. If they'd like to order it, they can just call Kathy.